What's up guys, this is Marcus from Studio One Expert. And today I wanted to have a look at some tips and some techniques and some keyboard shortcuts that we can use when we're working with loops. Uh, more specifically, when we're working with loops where we don't have any tempo information. So this could be loops that you're pulling and sampling from a record or something, or it could be a live loop that you have and you want to incorporate it into a project, but you need seamless loops. Okay, so first of all, let's have a really quick listen to what we're working with here. It's a simple pattern that I've recorded externally onto a field recorder and I've just brought back in, so it doesn't have any tempo information. Okay, so just a simple pattern and it just keeps on repeating itself. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to determine the amount of repeats we want. So I want this to happen twice. So this would be the downbeat of the first measure and we follow along. This will be the downbeat of the second. Okay, so we would want it to be out at this point. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my locate mouse cursor over here, and then I can just grab this point and I can just lop off the back end of this by using a keyboard shortcut that I have mapped out, which is splitting at the cursor and deleting everything after that. Then what I can do here is I can just go to the front end and I can just pull this back or I could actually go here, use my tab to transient and then I'm just going to use a keyboard shortcut which is, let's get the exact, it's going to be trim start to cursor which I've mapped out to control A. So let's use that. Okay, so now we've got this loop sectioned out here and it may or may not play perfectly but what I want to do first is I want to look at some of these shortcuts that I like to use when I'm working with loops. So the first thing I want to look at here is we're going to go to the transport menu and we're going to take a look at locate selection and locate selection end. So these can be really, really handy when you want to work in a really zoomed state, like something like this. And I wanted to go over really quickly and I wanted to see the end of this file. Instead of kind of zooming out, pulling back, or using our mouse and doing this when we're in this really zoomed state, it's super easy to just make sure that the event is selected and click the L. And then we're at the very beginning. I can zoom in, I can even do a data zoom over here, bring this up, and I wanna make sure that I'm not cutting anything off. And then I can just hop over to the back end to make sure that the back end of this track is good. So I can pull this back until I have the downbeat that I'm looking for, and I can do my editing that way to make sure that I have everything refined. Okay, so one of the things I want to look at here, one of the other things, is when you're working with loops, it's sometimes hard to get everything, you know, bang on and you're hopping back and forth between things. So we've got this really useful command here, or the ability to hold down Option or Alt and the Command key on a Mac, I guess that'd be the Control key on a Windows machine, and we can actually slip this event. So what I want to do with this event here is I want to make it so that the downbeat is at the very end, and I wanna pay attention to the zero crossing point that I'm at. So I'm gonna to stick to the positive zero crossing here, and I wanna make sure that at the beginning of the loop that I have from this part over. So I can use this, I'm zoomed in as far as we can go here, and I can now use this, and just kinda of get that exactly where I need it to be. So somewhere right about there. That would be perfect. So now I've got the back end sorted out. Now I can just hop in using the L, I can just hop right over to the front end. Now I can pull my zoom level a little bit. Again, I'm gonna use my keyboard shortcuts that I've created. I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit further here. And what we wanna do in this particular instance is I wanna make sure that this part over here is where we're coming in on the front end. So I'm gonna use my keyboard shortcut again, trim start to cursor, and that's just gonna allow me to cut this. Now I can really easily and really quickly hop back and forth between the back end of this event over here and the front end to make sure that I've got my edits done properly. And then when I'm happy with everything, let's just do a Shift S to bring that into focus, bring our data zoom down. Let's activate the loop here and let's test it out. Okay, so we've got a perfect seamless loop. Now, if it wasn't, we could very quickly and very easily zoom in here. I could hop to the very back end of this over here do my data zoom again to bring my data zoom level up, zoom in a little bit, and then make any corrections. So if I heard something that was a little bit off, I could just kind of play with this back and forth. Maybe I wanted to grab it from here, right over here. 
Maybe I wanted to grab it from here. And then I can very quickly test out what the front end of that loop is gonna be like just by clicking that really quickly. So anyways, I hope you guys got something from this and I'm gonna do another video in a little bit where we can use Melodyne to get some tempo information and take this workflow one step further. But in the meantime, when you're chopping loops and samples and trying to get perfectly loopable events, I hope these keyboard shortcuts and workflow concepts come in helpful for you. Anyways, I hope you guys got something from this and we'll talk to you later. Cheers.